So, John Spensley, I've just looked at your book, uh, Sweet Agony, which Paul signed it to the greatest man I ever met. I think reading that book, Sweet Agony, yeah. it's clear that Paul had great love for you, wasn't it? He yeah, kind yeah. of almost looked up oh, to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Never ever given it. You know, he, he was... Uh... Well, as much as a handful he was, he was never awkward with yeah. you. No, until he went out to him with the Rolls Royce to the fucking door in prison. Mm. He made he wanted to get out and think screws at the gate. He says, says I'd make fuck all look where I've mm. got now and it was mine. Then we went on the river rowing that mm -hmm. day. That's in that's in the book, isn't this way, Agony? Is it? Yeah. yeah. Um so there's a lot of people on YouTube these days, a lot of people never met him, never knew him. Uh, you did know the man. You lived with him. Yeah. How could you? What kind of person was he? The real Paul Sykes, not not the the tall stories on YouTube. Well, I don't know what they put on on YouTube. Uh, me, you How know, did you find him? All right. Mm. All right. Uh, with me, he was all right. He he, he was mind him more for me. Mm. He went in the club and went out the snooker club, and uh, he said. Uh, You've seen Is that enough the park in Middlesbrough? Yeah, yeah, you've seen someone go behind the counter and read the bottle and leave and take. He says, hey, what are you doing there? He says, this is my pal's fucking club. You know, any fucking thief in here, you know. Mm. Anyway, next day I had the, the fella, he, he was ringing up. This, I hope that big fella isn't in there. Who, and then I had a, a girl. Who was a barmaid, and she's gone on with a fella called Walsh. Uh, what a few quid, and he, 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 he was married, but he was mm. shagging her. Mm -hmm. And he, he used to leave a, a bottle of champagne for her if she wasn't on. Not buy her a drink, a bottle of champagne. Mm -hmm. She was a fucking head the ball. Mm. And she was, when she had a, a break, she'd open the champagne and sit at the bar. And she went to the toilet, and Paul came in and sat on the fucking seat. And uh, she says, oh, excuse me, that's my seat. He says, fuck off, you fat cow. <laughs> anyway, next thing I'm at home and the phone rings and this Walsh who's knocking it off. Hey, John, I'm going to come round that club and thrash that fella who's just had a go at my girlfriend, the cheeky bastard. He said. <laughs> so I said, you're going to come and thrash him? Yeah, Paul Sykes. He says, it's your club, you're his <laughs> Um, I mean, the film's going to happen. The documentary is going to happen. It's going to be huge the next couple of years when it gets done. I think it'll be massive, like the Bronsons and all this kind of thing. But he was a character. Listen, not glorifying him, but it was real life. He was part of the the social history, certainly in Wakefield. Oh yeah. You know, you were, <clears throat> you had some friends. Have you heard of Eppie's there? You no Eppie's, Eppie's fish and chip shop. Yeah. Yeah, that's a nightclub out the back. Yeah. Frank Epi, but you had you had friends that even though Paul was alright with you, you had to be wary about introducing him because these were normal business people, and they wouldn't have took kindly to some of the antics that Paul would have done. No, 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 no you couldn't. Uh, you only go to certain places with him, uh. but uh, you, you... <laughs> it, it could be an embarrassment mm. towards the end. I must be honest, I was at the fight. 1992, so it was Bomber Gray, Mellon Road. Yeah. And Henry uh, Wharton. He was pissed there. And I... I We're home. Hello. Oh, you had to move. You're all right. Yeah. Come in. Come in. You all right, John? Yeah, it's all right. They just... Yes, so we... Was that, was that the last time you seen him, wasn't it? When he was, I think that was the day he was knocked out by Nick Manners. So, and he was just going out and bumming drinks. He had that big Mac on. Yeah, 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 Brendan, yeah. Brendan Ingle chased him yeah. that day as well. Yeah. So, and he was just kind of going downhill, wasn't he? Yeah, bumming drinks. Yeah. yeah. I mean, hi, yeah, you're right. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, John, I paused it there. So, I mean, Paul was doing Barbara and Antics. He was turned up at the. The Highfield Hotel, yeah. the Baltimore Hotel in Middlesbrough, using your name. He bit. He bit. There was a night, I used to work there like 20 years ago, and there was an old guy there called Eric. 
and uh, Sykes bit him, didn't he? Yeah. Just because he asked for the money or something. Yeah. And this was down out on your name. Yeah. yeah. So and they just become he lost the plot then. Oh, Obviously yeah. he went. And he used to come up to the club then to borrow, and I never went. And I lent him some at once. That was it. But uh, it was, would have been a regular thing. He was becoming a bum then. Yeah. Um, and uh, I just used to have been struck him for another not to ring me, you know. Mm -hmm. But obviously, when he moved, when he got out of prison in March '77, he moved in to yours, didn't he? Because it was Tommy Miller yeah. who put him in touch with you yeah. and said, "Listen." Why well, stayed with us at the house? Yeah, because yeah. the, the the Yorkshire board weren't giving him a license. No. They they knocked him back in '73. Yeah. Then he done a few years for the robbery in Haverton Hill. Come out and got a license. Started fighting '78 to '80. Um, yeah. See, I, I was always against that stopping people from having a license when mm. they're in prison. It does attract rough people in boxing. Mm -hmm. It attracts gentlemen. It attracts, you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. uh, for people to get it, anyone who gets in a ring, professional ring, where they wear. And I was wearing. We used to wear six ounce gloves. You know, heavyweights when I was fighting. That's crazy. It's ten ounce now, isn't it? Yeah, fucking six ounce gloves. And uh, the 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 the. the Anyone who goes in that ring with a crowd waiting and shouting for you, mm. and and you're in the dressing room getting ready, and you see the fellow you're going to fight punching the wall, getting ready. You never call a man a coward who's ever been in the ring. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, it's uh, uh, you know I don't think you ever can. No, but I mean, there's a lot of people now. Sykes is getting bigger. It's going to be kind of people like oh, this he was gay and all this guy. Sykes was openly gay, wasn't he? Yeah, but he... he, he wasn't, it wasn't... It he wasn't, wasn't gay, he was... It was just gay for the stay in prison. Yeah, I think he was... Yeah, I mean, he, he don't even know that. It's only he told me that. I mean, yeah. I never... You know, people... Tales go around, yeah. you know, but they don't... Yeah. But uh, no one dare say it to him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because there's a lot of people... I mean, I've, I've spoken to prison governors, police... Op I've spoken the top... Chief of West Yorkshire yeah. Police a couple of years back, yeah. and they're like there was no there was no convictions of anything like that. You know all these other sexual allegations, but he was he was he was it wasn't openly. But I went into the prison and I visited his son, and he said if our dad was here now, he'd openly admit. He said, "Listen, I've had sex with men," but a lot of people these days are trying to make it more than it was. So why was there no charges? Why was there no? Well. It because no man would come and say he'd had sex with him, I suppose. You have to have that. Because he said it, he can't mm. get arrested for saying something. It's like if you said, I've had drugs, they've got to catch you with them. Yeah. When you get in the court, mm. you'll say, I was joking. But how would you describe him up on your relationship and you knew him for probably, really well for probably 15 years? Yeah, well, I, I had my relationship with him was all right. I found him a great entertainer. Uh, mm. Um, yeah, um, you know, what can I say? He was a good pal. Mm. I mean, he was a pal. I mean, his boxing career had very little to do with me. I got him I beat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> with Malpass, because you were in Malpass's corner, yeah, weren't you? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, and... and, and uh, but you've been around a lot of people, John, a lot of characters over the years, and, you know, so many people now you've been around but was there anyone more of a character more entertaining than mr sykes you ever met in your gyms no i didn't uh, you said to me he was like having a comedian in your he gym he was fabulous i mean he was gifted after dinner speech if you if you're not drunk he'd have brought the house down as after dinner speech mm. it was his discipline was appalling wasn't it yeah so well, well, he had a Obviously, a flaw in his mind or something. Do you think he was mentally ill? Yeah, of course. Today, in the 21st century, if he'd still been here, I think he'd have been diagnosed with all sorts, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And you, there was a few famous people in your bars, and when they met him, they were like, Where'd you get him from, John? It was a football manager, Malcolm Allison. Yeah. Alex Higgins, did he ever meet him? Yeah. yeah, so Paul Sykes, um, 
yeah, the film's coming, the documentary's coming. John, I'd like to think you could be part of the documentary, mate. Um, obviously, with the, yeah. the likes of the showers yeah, and all yeah, that. Yeah. Um, sadly, there's a lot of people close to Sykes, like your Ronnie Trillfalls, your yeah. David Dunford's yeah. no longer here. Um, were you familiar with them? Yeah, not really. I, I, I knew the coloured lad. In, in, in Dalroy Showers. Delroy, I knew Dalroy, but that was all. Yeah. I never had much to do with him in his environment at Wakefield, to be honest. Yeah. I, I went through the fight when they had the fight there, with, uh, and I went through a couple of times to see him at, at Epi's. Yeah. Uh, but that was it. I, ne I never, he couldn't have seen me and stayed with me. Yeah, because he was selling his biography, so he released, he'd written his book in 88 in prison, which won the Arthur Kersler Award. He yeah. was given 15 quid for that. Um, and then, so he really started selling that in 1990. But I found the flyer the other week, John, and it was Paul's official flyer, and he was selling it from your pub. Yeah. So did he sell a lot of them books? Yeah, we sold a few. Not, 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 not. Hmm. Not a bestseller. 10,000 copies were printed. Yeah. So that's, that's what it's done. Well, that was more than I would have thought, to be honest. Mm. But uh, it, it's, um, sorry, I Would there be many people come in the pub to buy him, like? Oh. Uh, yeah, well, mainly there were, there were um, people are. <coughs> I knew. Uh, mm. Was Sykes off to the Middlesbrough? He was, wasn't he? And it was yeah. always really for you. Oh, yeah, he was here a lot in Middlesbrough. He used to come up and. And he used to come up and spar with George Scott, and George Scott wouldn't come, never turned up. Mm. And then he had his father had the cheek. <coughs> what happened with George Scott is he, he fought an eliminator, which I was telling you about. Mm. And the father kept all the money for the fucking tickets. Mm. So I had no option but to go before the board and get George license suspended till he paid that money. Mm. And uh, when he was brought before the board, what his excuse was that I was a Catholic and he was a Protestant mm. and I took him to Northern Ireland to fight a uh, Catholic who he, who he beat. That was McAlinden, the British heavyweight. Danny McAlinden. Yeah, yeah. And he beat him and got paid and come back. And we had full protection by the IRA. They guaranteed that we would not be, you know, we were not the top politics to us or anything. We were in the pub where all the IRA were. It was, they were promoting the show for money. Mm. And, uh, the, 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 you know, but that was his excuse, which was laughed at, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Uh, and uh, anyway, then I had Mickey Duff ring me. And I said, how much does he owe you? I said, about two grand. He says, right, I'll send it up to you. We can release him. I said, all right. And then he took over him? He just took him. He needed a body mm. for fucking Bruno to knock out or someone. Right. You know, he lasted around. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he was just wanted a body. And it was, it was there for the asking without mm. going to America. Mm. Yeah. And the last word goes to you, John, on Sykesy. I mean, there, there's a picture of him above you. Yeah. But there's a picture of you and Tommy Miller. Yeah. And that's a picture of you, Paul Sykes, your brothers, and George Scott, who you were just talking yeah, about. Yeah. Uh, Dave Garside there. Brian London. Dave Garside again. Would you say Dave Garside was probably the best fighter you ever managed then? You're quite close to him, aren't you? Yeah, I like Dave. Dave's a good, good man. Yeah. Right, John, absolute pleasure. Thank you very much, mate. He's got a sensible lead on him, Dave Garside. You know, he's mm. done very well money-wise. He should do a book, shouldn't he, one day? Yeah, 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 yeah.